Hello everybody, today we'll talk about A weighting. So A weighting is commonly used for relating the measurements of sound pressure level, sound power level, or intensity level. A weighting is applied to measure sound levels in order to account for the relative loudness perceived by the human ear. Now this curve represents the 44 curve from the equal loudness contour curves or fletcher munson curves. And the unit of A weighted sound pressure level is expressed as dBA with the A in the parentheses signifying that it's A weighted. So equal loudness contours were the result of a large number of experiments performed you know, in the field of psychoacoustics on a large group of people, asking them to, you know, playing them a one kilohertz tone and asking them how the other frequencies sound, how, how are they loud relative to one kilohertz, and then the data is plotted, it's repeated for a large group of people so that you can, you know, remove uh, any errors. So this is the result of that psychoacoustic experiment, which is equal loudness contour. So this graph tells us how the other frequencies how loud are the other frequencies perceived relative to 1000? If you look at 1000, it's like at that region, there is no deviation, whereas in the low frequencies and high frequencies, you can see some bumps and dips. If you want to learn more about equal loudness contour, check the link in the description below. But we are referring to the 40 phone curve for this A weighting level. So let's talk briefly about frequency response. Frequency response is how well your output relates to the input. So if you have a flat frequency response, you're going to capture the sound as is. Now, for example, certain condenser microphones have a flat frequency response because uh, they are used in recording and you want to record as is and not color the sound. Now, in contrast, our human ear have a nonlinear frequency response, which also reflects in the equal loudness contour. You see that it's not a straight line. Rather, you know, has lots of bumps and dips. It's because we have a nonlinear frequency response. Our ears favor... The region between 2 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz most, it's pretty poor in the base region as it's reflected here. So that's the frequency response. So how do you convert a, a level, you know, from unweighting to A weighting? So you simply add the A weighting factors. If you have, let's say, a, a sound pressure level in decibel, you need to convert it to A weighting. You need to add the A weighting factor. But the key thing to note here is that it's not a single value it's only applicable for a band of frequency. So for each frequency band, you need to do this. We'll look at the examples in a moment. You can't do it like an overall level. Let's say you're on an overall level of like 80 dB. You can't simply add an A weighting factor. You have to do it for each frequency band and then add it up logarithmically. And the formula for removing A weighting is as simple, pretty, pretty much subtracted from the A weighted level. So this is the conversion table. So here I have the one by one octave frequency bands from 31.5 to 16k. And then these are the corresponding values. So you got to add them up to an unweighted level. You just see here that the lower frequencies in the base have a negative value, whereas uh, the 1000 hertz has a zero and the higher frequencies are mostly positive. So when you add them up, you can remove the you know, you can get the sound pressure level in a weighting. So this is the same thing plotted in a graph. You do see that we are amplifying the regions from 2K to 5K, whereas we're drastically cutting down the base. So this is the same graph for one third octave. So the resolution is much finer here because there are more data points. So let's perform an experiment. Let's say we have a random noise data for one by one octave. We have this unweighted level. These are just random values. Now we want to convert it to A weighting, so we simply add the, you know, corresponding values to the unweighted level to get the A weighting, and finally we get this value. So the important thing is that we have to do it for each frequency band. There is no one value to convert from 84.4 to 65.8, but rather it has to be done for each frequency band, and then I add it up logarithmically. If you want to check more about logarithmic addition, you can check in the link in the description as well. So here's a comparison of unweighted and A-weighted. You can see the dotted graph is the unweighted versus the, the one without dots is the A-weighted. So you do see here that the A-weighted is cutting down on the base, the lower frequencies, and amplifying the 2K to 5K hertz. But at 1000 hertz, they both are the same. So if you see a graph that's extremely loud in the base region, but you can't hear it, it's because that it's, you have not maybe added the A weighting. So when you add the A weighting, it's actually representing what you're actually hearing. So to unweight, you simply do the opposite. 
you add, you know, you change the positives and negatives. So this is how the unweighting curve looks like. It may not be used everywhere, but if you want to use it, it's present. So you amplify the bass and you cut down the 2K to 5K hertz. So there are certain limitations with the A weighting. It cannot be used to assess the annoyance, especially in the low frequencies below 250. In case of higher sound pressure levels, you know, you cannot use A weighting because the, the frequency relationship is no longer the same. We do tend to hear the bass equally loud to the, you know, high frequencies at higher sound pressure levels, like around 90 to 100 decibels. So at such cases, in such cases, you can't use A weighting, you need to use C weighting. And the A weighting does not accurately describe the psychoacoustic quantity loudness. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.